What's up? It's your boy, GTS the King, and, you know, I've been seeing this draw my life crap all over YouTube, and I uh, actually got an email the other day asking why I hadn't done a draw my life, and I thought, well, it would take me a couple hours to draw it, so instead of doing, uh, you know, getting too elaborate or telling you too much, I basically just hit some of the finer points and we'll go through it and try to explain this crap and I guess you'll get to know me a little bit better. Alright, well, I was born in Pikeville, Kentucky and as you can see there I can't draw where the crap or at least I can't draw the United States which is just awful. And uh, But yeah, I was born in Pikeville, Kentucky which is where most of my family is from and uh, my dad was a he was actually a, a family friend of my mom's family for a long time and uh, my dad was quite older than my mother she was only uh, 19 years old and uh, anyway so long story short my mom had me see there I was always the king at two years old we decided to move to Ohio now I didn't know this until years later but I guess my father was actually born in Ashland, Ohio. So we ended up moving uh, back to the Ashland Mansfield area where my father was from and that's where we lived. Where we moved to in uh, Ashland was a uh, I don't really know what they're called but it was like apartment buildings where people go when they don't have a lot of money or single mothers and things like that and back then like you had wick and the food stamps and things like that and uh, that's the type of apartment buildings we moved into and the reason we did that is my father uh, actually worked there so uh, basically it was just easier to move in I guess because I if, if I remember right we were not bad off uh, back then by any means so like I said my dad worked there and he was the uh, maintenance man uh, as you can see, I put a uh, piss poor hammer in his hand, and uh, so my dad, and mom had me their first and wonderful, awesome GTS, and about four years later, they had my brother Cody, and we are nothing alike. Anybody who knows us, uh, we are absolutely nothing alike. My brother is like an Abercrombie model. And obviously I am not. So, yeah. Alright, jumping ahead a few years. Um, my mom and dad uh, signed me up at a, uh, in, not really an inner city school. Uh, that's, just, that's just not accurate. But uh, it was more in the city. I went to an elementary school called Lincoln, which, uh, if I remember right, is still there uh, in Ashland uh, County, Ohio. And uh, anyway, my dad and mom fought like crazy. And uh, even after my brother was born, it was just nonstop. Um, you know, it just never ended. They were just miserable together. So eventually they got a divorce. And, you know, me and my brother didn't know what was going on. We just knew that we no longer seen our father nearly as much as the, you know, as we did. But, you know, we were so young, we didn't really know what was going on. Now, unfortunately, this led to hardly ever seeing my father and we moved from house to house to house to trailer to house to house and believe it or not the moving um, hasn't really stopped until recently and even now I continue to move repeatedly I guess I was just kind of raised in that lifestyle. I've gotten very used to it, but I do say that I hate it because, you know, I guess I never get to be one of those kids that say, hey, I grew up in this house because I grew up in a hundred houses. So to make a very long story short about my childhood, everything was pretty piss poor uh, once my parents got a divorce until my uh, mom finally remarried and uh, I got to say that me and my brother went through a lot. I won't get in, into that too much, but we went through a lot with the men that uh, my mom was seeing uh, when we moved a lot and stuff. And let's just put it like this. They were all assholes. And so it made me very 
um, defensive and very aggressive towards anybody that my mom was seeing. So anyway, she met this man named Randy. He was a great guy, but me and my brother treated him like pure shit. And he still stuck around. He's actually still married to my mom. They're very happy doing great. And I got to respect him for putting up with the crap that I put him through. My dad, on the other hand, he was just miserable. And it wasn't because my mom had gotten remarried or anything like that. He was just, I don't know, he was just constantly mad. And it just seemed like nothing we did could be right. And he was just, he was always mad. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about my father, but he uh, actually did get remarried a couple times. But he, uh, you know, he was a big inspiration uh, for me in my life because he's he's done a lot with his life. And I believe that's where I got my aspiration to do everything that I've done. And he taught me so much over the years. And he's had to endure so much that I feel like that's where I get a lot of my strength from to never back down because the man has been through so much that it's crazy. And the only reason I'm not talking about him in this is not because I hate my father or want to try to make people think that I have a, a bad relationship with my father. I don't. It's a little strained from time to time, but it's it's not that bad. Um, it's just mainly there's so much to discuss about my father and and one thing just snowballs it So we're just gonna move on from that Jumping few years ahead um, I was about 18 years old. I graduated high school and uh, Which speaking of school um, This has nothing to do with you know the page we're on but um, I got moved from the city schools uh, that I was going to to a school out in the middle of freaking nowhere and it was what I like to call a hick school uh, it was nothing but farmers and things like that and I was completely out of place uh, I did make a few good friends uh, one of them is still my best friend uh, so it wasn't too bad but anyway uh, while going to the school I uh, met this woman who we're gonna call R and uh, we stayed together for a while but long story short she was a pure bitch and she constantly told me that I never aspired, I didn't have any aspirations, and I wouldn't amount to anything. At the time, I was already a uh, pretty well-known rap artist and uh, was doing a lot of shows all over the United States. And uh, I had literally, I remember the first fight, I had just gotten home from opening up for uh, Tech 9 and uh, back then Tech 9 wasn't you know that famous but still uh, you know I got to open up for Tech 9 and uh, I'd come home and just constant bitching nonstop, and was told I would never do anything and didn't aspire to have anything so needless to say that relation relationship ended very quickly so after that I founded DBNP records and the story behind that is um, which it was always in the making. It was just, I had gotten to the point where I was big enough to where, you know, I I felt, you know, untouchable. And being that I'm always humble and have never let success really get to my head or anything, I wanted to take the money that I was making and give back. But I felt like the money that we could give to charity and stuff wasn't enough. So I needed a way to bring everybody together and so I did. I brought together um, all my people that you know recorded with me, my engineers, everything, and we created DBNP Records, which stands for Death Be Not Proud. And the Grim Reaper is obviously our symbol. While doing DBNP Records, um, I met two of my uh, very best friends. Uh, you actually see them on this channel, uh, Amoral and Rennes, and uh, we actually. We met through another friend while we were recording and things like that. Uh, I met Amoral first, and uh, he pitched me this idea. He knew I was a rap artist. I had recorded at his studio a couple times, and he pitched me the, uh, this idea for this group that was like um, a cross between horrorcore, death metal, and just grunge and hip hop. And at the time, I thought that sounds stupid. Um, I, I don't know if I want to do that. Well. Basically, he showed me that it could be awesome, 
And how he did that was playing me a song that he had already recorded, and it was amazing. And what was weird, I actually was in this group for damn near a year before I actually ever met the, met the third member, Rennis. Um, and looking at the three of us, we seem very eccentric and, and crazy, but uh, they're two of my best friends, and uh, we're all actually very nice people, and we do want to give back to the community. But Chainsaw is fucking awesome. You should check us out. We're amazing. Which we don't record anymore. Uh, that group kind of, I won't say fell apart, but we kind of went our separate ways. Uh, although we're all still members of DBNP, um, obviously I kind of have to be, but um, they stuck with me. They're still by my side, you know, doing stuff. Uh, obviously, like I said, they're on this channel, so you can see that for yourself. Um, skipping ahead a few more years, uh, I don't mean to skip out on uh, a lot of my friends and stuff. It's just. A big thing about my life is some of the people that I would talk about uh, wouldn't appreciate too much me talking about them because they're kind of private people. Um, let's just put it this way. I've met a lot of shady characters in my life and have been very best friends with some people that to the general public would think that they were vagrants and just not good people when in truth they really are I always say we were a product of our environment you know we did wrong things uh, a lot of my friends did but we're still here today anyway so skipping years ahead um, I never really dated or messed with anybody after R uh, mainly because I didn't think that there was a such thing as love and didn't really care to get involved in that crap again so I basically just kind of hoard around and never really dated or, you know, did anything serious. And then I met my wife. And you guys already know her name. I don't know why I just put Jay on there. If you've watched most of my videos, my wife's name is Julie. And uh, we've been together for three years now. And what's funny is when I met her, she had this dog named Bub. And the little bastard was so mean that every time I'd get near her, he would bite the shit out of me. And it was so funny, though, because if I went to her house to see her, he would climb up in my lap and just lay in my lap. So it was kind of weird. But we still have him, and he's he's come around slowly. He doesn't bite me as often anymore, although he does still bite me from time to time. Um, later on, because I brought up Bub, I have to bring up my dog Coco. Uh, it's a very funny story of how I got her, actually. I was working at a gas station, and uh, my wife had been dying to get a mini pen. And these people came to me and said, hey, do you want a mini pen? We'll give it to you for free. I said, of course I want a mini pen. You know, my wife would love that. So they show up with this dog, and it is not a mini pen. It is a Chawini, if I ever saw one. But she was beautiful. She's chocolate brown, chocolate nose, brown eyes, and just the sweetest dog. And so we ended up keeping her, and she's still with us, and her and Bob are like our children. So there you go. Now, the biggest thing is uh, we moved around a lot. We ended up moving to Kentucky, uh, back to Kentucky where my family is. And uh, I was working out here and everything. That's actually where I got Coco. And I met a very good friend of mine. Uh, his name was Chris. And... Uh, you know, I've lost a lot of people in my life. I didn't go through all that, you know, previously because I've lost nine of my best friends and I've lost grandparents and I lost an uncle before I was even born. So I have been plagued with death, you know, quite often. But for some reason, you know, I guess it never gets any easier, but it really hit home. I was working at a gas station and this man come in every day. Um, and hardly anybody would talk to him, uh, in the area of Kentucky that we were at, it's, I wouldn't say it's racist, but everybody's still kind of stuck in their old ways. And I think more or less they're afraid of anybody who's not white. So they wouldn't really talk to him a whole lot. And I talked to him every day, you know, being from the city where I was from, I, I just don't see color. I, I don't, I don't think of race ever. And, uh, so me and him hit it off like crazy, and we ended up becoming like pretty much best friends. Uh, he was damn near my brother. He was at my house all the time. Uh, we were constantly giving stuff to each other, helping each other out and stuff. 
And uh, last year, it was actually December 23rd, um, I went to work and I got a phone call. I mean, I literally just pulled in the driveway and uh, I parked my car and out walks my manager and she says, Travis, you got a phone call. And uh, I walk in and as soon as I hit the phone, uh, Chris's fiance tells me that he's dead. Um, it was very hard to keep my composure. Um, I'm sitting right there in front of all my colleagues. Um, I'm a manager at the time and I got my subordinates and stuff sitting right in front of me and I'm trying not to lose it, but you know, it was very hard, uh, to maintain, especially, you know, getting hit like that. And, uh, basically he died in a car accident. It was very sudden and I miss him a lot, but we're going to move on from that. So because of that, though, I kind of spiraled and I moved back to Ohio with my wife. Uh, she wanted to be closer to her family. And at the time, I just I didn't care. Um, I was so lost. I didn't want to be around anybody. Uh, I didn't really give a crap about any of my friends and stuff. I just I had completely spiraled down. Um, I don't know why it took a toll on me the way it did. I guess it was just so sudden. And it, it just confused me and everything. I was hardly making music. The music I was making wasn't that great. I wasn't making hardly any money off of it. And everything just started to fall apart. So I knew I needed a change. Well, I turned to the one thing that has always been there for me, and that's games. Um, when I was younger, you know, my father got me the Atari. Well, I mean, he had the Atari. Um, and he made sure he got me the Nintendo as soon as it came out. I was very privileged that I had a father that he was always into technology, and when game consoles started coming out, he was all about them. So I grew up constantly having the newest console and playing and so on and so forth. Well, at this point in time in my life, I really had only ever played console games. I never played on the computer. I didn't like playing on the computer. I just didn't care to. Um, and it was weird because I recorded all my music on the computer and it seemed like I spent most of my life on the computer, but I think that's why I separated games, um, from the computer because it was, I don't know, I spent so much time on the computer already. I guess I felt like I didn't really want to spend any more time on the computer. So anyway, I, I dove into what, you know, had always kind of been there for me and that was video games. And I played games like crazy and just constantly reflected and talked to my wife and everything about what was going on in my life and everything. And long story short, uh, me and my wife were, you know, while I'm in this gaming mode, we're, we're on the internet and we're looking at, you know, people doing Let's Plays and things like that. And I've always been intrigued by Let's Players and I always wanted to do my own videos and things like that. I just never, I guess I just never really took the leap and, and did it. So... I just never got around to it. So we're on the computer and we're looking at a Slender video. And a lot of it was because while I'm gaming and everything, my wife uh, somehow was wondering about Slenderman. <laughs> she had no idea who Slenderman was. So we watched a video of some guy, I don't even remember who it was, playing Slenderman. But then we came across the video of some Slenderman game. I don't even remember what it was. <coughs> Excuse me. And it was Markiplier. And watching him, we just cracked up. Um, I was immediately a fan. I subscribed to his channel. And I just kept watching him over and over. And I seen he was from Cincinnati in Ohio. And I guess through watching Markiplier over and over and over, I got the idea that I needed to follow my dream. I had always aspired to be a rap artist. Excuse me. And I did that. But I had always wanted to make Let's Play videos, believe it or not, and never did it. And I thought that was kind of crazy that I'd followed my major dream and, you know, took it to the fullest. But something that I aspired to do that I knew would make me happy, I just never did. So, the idea I had was 
very intense, and I didn't know what to do, so I grabbed the phone, I call Amoral, I call Rennis, I call Casper, I call Lucky, and Taz, and Ghost, and Shadow. These are all the people that are on my record label, and I discussed it with them, you know, I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that, and we had talked about it, you know, over time, and, and so on and so forth, and so I decided to take a giant risk and change us from DBNP Records to DBNP Entertainment. This was going to be a big risk because of the money factor. But I knew that if we incorporated our music, which is primarily hip hop, with the things that we wanted to see on YouTube and make review shows and game shows and let's plays and things of this nature all on YouTube as DBNP Entertainment, that something would work out. So, it came down again to what I had said earlier about wanting to make more money for charity. Well, as we started to create the channel, I had got on and researched that a lot of people were making uh, decent money from YouTube. So, what we decided was to try to make as much money as possible to donate to charity through our YouTube channel because we feel like we might be able to make more doing this than with our music because the biggest problem nowadays with music is everything is downloaded on the internet and and most of the time it's free so it's getting harder to raise money to give to the cancer foundations or anything that we wanted to do so we're hoping that youtube helps us make the money that we want to give to charity i i kind of have a tongue-in-cheek um joke with always trying to make money but a lot of it is that we've always wanted to give back because we've always i guess we haven't been well off but we haven't been very poor either um i have hit that point in my life um that's a big thing i skip because i don't like to talk about it um i wasn't just poor i was so poor that i didn't know where my next meal was coming from because i literally didn't have any food and anyway so we want to give back to charities and stuff because we've all been through stuff like that. My wife had cancer and she beat it. She's in remission right now. And this stuff means a lot to me. So the more subscribers we get and the more ways we find to make money, we're going to do our best to give back to charities and, and make sure that it gets back to the people that deserve it, which is you as our general audience. But... I mean, that's really all I want to talk about and uh, do for my Draw My Life. So, thank you all for watching. This is GTS The King, DB&P. Peace out.